In this video, I'm showing you how to do 3D scanning with the Kinect for Xbox One, and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I'd like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So recently on this channel, I've tested the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus 3D scanner capabilities. And I also referred to that there is other similar scanner devices that I want to test out. So this is the first video about how to scan with the Kinect for Xbox One. And there is also going to be a video about how to scan with Xbox 360 Kinect. So on All3DP, there was an article this year about how to start scanning with both of these devices. And that article claimed that it's possible with both devices to use the same software. I discovered that this is not true anymore, at least. So there's a software out there that's called ScanAct, which is uh, usable for non-commercial projects for free. And that only supports the Xbox 360 and the Xbox for Windows controller, but it doesn't support anymore the Kinect for Xbox One. And because of that, you have to use a different software with the Kinect for Xbox One. And that's what we are going to do today. And in another video, I'm going to show you how ScanAct can be used with this older device. So what we need is the sensor, which is the Kinect for Xbox One. You can still get it on eBay or Amazon used and sometimes also new. And additionally, because this plug um, that's coming with this device is not a USB plug, you need an adapter to plug it into your PC. And this adapter is fairly large, so you have a adapter where you plug in the Kinect and then you have a power supply and you get some extension cables so you have some reach to cover uh, larger areas of build volume while still having the PC standing in one position. So the first thing you need to do is to download the Windows Kinect drivers and this is done on the Microsoft homepage. I've linked it in the description down below. And once it's done, we'll head over to the Windows Store, Microsoft Store. And in the Microsoft Store, you will need to search for 3D Scan. So let's install this application first. Now I'd like you to also search for an application that is called 3D Viewer. And this is quite useful because with this app, you can easily view the scans that you've just done. You could also use something like Fusion 360 or you could open it up in Cura, but the 3D Viewer app is a little bit more convenient just to quickly see if a scan was successfully done and how it looks like. So once we are in the 3D scan application, I'm gonna make it full screen and you can see here, it cannot find the sensor. So we have to plug it into our PC now. And that's going to take a minute or two to install the driver. Once that's done, you can just hit the refresh button and it should start the camera. It might ask you for allowance to use the camera. So you should confirm that with yes. And now we are basically ready to do 3D scanning. And for that, I'm going to head over to the center of this room where I have a little table so I can walk around the table to do my scans. So guys, I'm ready to scan now. Um, mostly I have the same objects here on this table than with the Note 10 Plus test. Uh, the only difference is I don't have the dinosaur anymore, but we have the lion statue, we have the teddy bear, we have a glass and we have a watering pot and also two 3D printed objects. So we can uh, look for some detail with smaller objects and some detail with larger objects. So I'm going to kick it off with the lion statue first and then the teddy bear and all the rest of the objects. And then finally, we're gonna look at the results at the computer in a moment. So let's kick it off. So first thing to do here is to put the camera at the right distance. So you can see that the Kinect sensor sort of has a plane that comes into the screen, which is this grayish plane. And if you see that happening over your object, you know that you are too close to your object. And that also shows me that you have to be at quite of a distance from the object to scan it. So let's start and hit the scan button. And my computer here is not the fastest, so I have to go a little bit slower. 
And with a little bit more powerful PC, you would probably be able to go faster, but here I have to be a little bit more careful how fast I move. And I always have to check out that I keep the object in the center of the picture. And in the lower right corner of the application, you can see that there is a point cloud that already building up. And that point cloud is then going to be used to finally create the object. And the application now starts compiling the point cloud into a 3D object. And we can view that 3D object in a moment to see whether the scan results are decent or not. Okay, now let's have a look at the next object, which is the teddy bear. Um, that looks also quite nice. If you look at the point cloud, you can see there's quite some detail. Um, I'm speeding up the video is now a little bit, so you don't have to wait so long. Now we're coming to the next object, which is the watering pot. Now from the point cloud, you can't really tell if it's a good object or not. Uh, we're gonna see that later. And then we're continuing with the glass. Um, there you can also see the challenge with the glass because it's transparent, it's really hard for a scanner to see anything. And next are the two smaller objects and there I had to reduce the rectangle to really keep the object in the middle and to keep it focused. It's not that easy and you still have to keep quite some distance. So what are you doing there is actually you're reducing the resolution of the scanner significantly because you're only using a very small image size to scan the actual object. So I'm done scanning. Let's have a look at the final results. Starting off with the lion statue, opening up in 3D Viewer. And that looks pretty awesome, I'd say. A good amount of detail. Also, the texture is captured very nicely. So this is not unexpected. I'd say the lion statue is probably one of the safest bets to get a good result because it has a decent size. It has not such a complex structure. So it reflects the light just enough, but not too much. And that is why this result is probably that good. And it also shows that the resolution of the camera is actually pretty good um, to get some really decent details. If we head over to the mesh um, view and have a look at how much detail is there actually in terms of the vertices and triangles. It's really a lot of detail. So you can really print this and get pretty good results, I'd say. So looking at the second scan, which was the teddy bear, I'd say in terms of the detail, it's also pretty nice. Some of the colors, the uh, textures is a little bit off here at the top. So I should have angled the camera probably at some point a little bit more upwards, but I'd say still the result is pretty nice. You can also see this little hole here, this gap between the arm and the leg, which was captured pretty nicely. And heading over to the mesh view, uh, also we see that we have quite some detail. So this is also something that we could easily print and get some fairly good results. And also the, the size of the object again is probably the reason why this works so well. So uh, looking at the distance of how far we had to go away with the camera, around about half a meter, or a little bit more, and then the size of the object, that fits pretty well for this Kinect sensor. Um, any kind of small objects, I'm really curious to see how this looks like. So now the third object we're looking at here is the watering pot. Again, it's not a surprise that this hasn't been captured, um, if at all, I would say because of the reflections, you can see that it's somehow in the texture of the table. You can see that the watering pot, but the 3D structure is completely lost, uh, mostly probably because of the reflections um, that the IR camera isn't able to deal with. Here the same, um, similar but not unexpected result with the glass. You might think that there is actually a glass in this object, but it's still only the texture on the table that has been yeah, put here. But the actual 3D object is just a little blob here and it's not captured well at all. Also, same reason, it's a transparent object, so an IR camera that relies on infrared light to be reflected back. Um, it's not working. So you have to deal with solid objects or you need to use a chalk spray. So let's have a look at our 
tower, which is uh, pretty much the same problem than with the Note 10 Plus. Um, here it's not the reflectiveness of an object, but it's just the pure size of an object that is difficult to capture for this camera. So since this tower is very thin and small, you can still see the texture mapped to this table surface, but the actual 3D object is just a mess. And I expect the very same result for the Banshee. And yeah, that's the case here. So the Banshee is even worse. So you can't really recognize anything on this thing. It's just a little yeah, mountain on the table, but uh, nothing recognizable as a little ship. So I really like to get your opinions on this. Please comment down below. And I also put the link to the files that I've just created as a download in the description of this video. So go check them out if you like. Next time we're gonna cover the Xbox 360 Connect sensor with the ScanX software, which is a completely different software package. I'm curious for the results as well. Yeah, and that's it for today. I hope you liked the video. And if so, please like, share, subscribe, all the good things. And see you next time on this channel. Goodbye.